great, what a great prayer that that song is singing. You can have the whole world, just give me Jesus. And, and it's always that exchange. There's a scripture that says, um, don't love the world for the things that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Because if you do, the love of the Father will not be in you. Or you won't have a love for the Father. And there's always an exchange of us giving up our worldly thinking, our lustful ways, our prideful ways to receive what God has for us. And, and there's just a trick, and I think a lot, a, all of us have fell for it, that temporary pleasure is going to be long-lasting. But we know this, that every pleasure has a time limit on it. Every high has a time limit on it. And what ends up happening after the high, there's a downer. And after the high, there's an addiction. And then you realize that pleasure lied to me. It promised me an escape. And what it did, it delivered a prison. And some of us today, emotionally, you've been in prison. And in life, you've been in prison. But the problem is, is that you're passing on a criminal mindset to your children. So what that means is, unless you get set free, you're gonna make them prisoners. So someone today is gonna get set free today because you're gonna make up your mind, I'm gonna give up the world, give me Jesus, give me the peace, give me the joy, give me the eternal life, give me the fullness of life. Jesus came and he came to do this. He came to give you a full life. I know you're looking for it, but the truth is, unless you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, peace is gonna, is gonna flee from you, joy is gonna flee from you, and this is what's gonna be, your dreams are gonna flee from you, and then you're gonna have a mindset of just barely surviving, stuck, I feel like I'm stuck, you're gonna become hopeless, that's not God's purpose for your life. God created you to be like Him, come on, a person with no limits. There's dreams and visions that God wants to give you to accomplish, and He says, why don't you come with me and let's go change the world? Why don't you come with me and let's go conquer the world? Let, why don't you come with me and let's, let's get some vision accomplished? How many want to be visionaries that actually get vision done? Let's give the Lord a hand that we have a Savior that's calling us. Wherever you're at, I pray that you just open yourself up today and receive the message. Um, today we're going to be continue talking about leadership and everything that we're going to be talking about is going to absolutely make sense. It's going to be true. And when you find truth and you actually apply it to your life, it leads to the results you've always wanted. And this is what it's going to lead to, success. God doesn't want you to be successful in part of your life. He wants you to be a successful person in every part of your life. He doesn't want success to visit you. He wants you to be, come on, a source of success. God wants you to succeed in every area of your life. How many understand that? So we're going to learn about leadership today, and, and this is what I've learned. If I follow a successful leader, if I think like them, if I do what they do, there's no secret, I get the results. And the greatest leader in the history of the world is Jesus Christ. Come on. It's time to stop following the loser, Satan. I start follow, come on, start following the winner, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Have your way today, Father, as we learn. We want to learn. And then give us the conviction to apply this. Because unless you transform our hearts, we'll, we'll know, we'll hear it, but we'll never do it. So we want this word to penetrate our hearts and transform us through your power. Have your way today. In Jesus' name, in our hearts. Amen. You may be seated. We want to talk about leadership. And, and let's, let's go into the definition again of a leader. is one who has developed the skill. I love the statement, develop because every one of us can develop as leaders. And the greatest thing you could ever be in life after becoming a believer in Jesus Christ is becoming a leader that could lead people to Christ, lead people to change, lead people to victory, lead people out of addiction, lead people to healing, lead people to freedom, and people need leadership. Your children need leadership. But it's the one who has developed the skill and ability to influence and lead themselves. And we know leadership starts with self-leadership. Before you can lead anyone else, 
you have to lead yourself or be leadable. Say, say with me, be leadable. You cannot lead people to a place you've never been. You have to be able to get there to help people get there. You cannot give what you don't have. There's some battles that you're in right now. They're not meant to defeat you. They're meant to lead you and develop you. And you're, this is what's supposed to happen in the challenge you're facing. It's not supposed to overwhelm you. You're supposed to learn how to overcome it with the leadership of God in your life, the leadership of his wisdom, so you can help other people overcome. You could say this, I used to be there. I'm no longer there. I, I, come on, I used to be bound, now I'm free. Come on, I used, to be, I, I used to be depressed, now I have the joy of the Lord. I used to be lost, but now I'm found. Whatever year, I used to be defeated, but now I'm victorious. Is there anybody here that wants that kind of testimony? Because if you could get it, you could give it. Say it with me, if you could get it, you could what? So whatever challenge that you're facing right now is not meant to defeat you, it's meant to teach you. Whatever you're going right, through right now, I know it's difficult, but it's supposed to be your school of leadership. And, and this is the idea, if you're going through a trial, God is saying, ask me for some wisdom, I'll lead you through this trial. Though I walk through the valleys of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Because thy rod, you are with me, your rod and staff comfort me. And what does God do? He directs you through, through the valleys, through the trouble, and you get to the other side. And on the other side, there's a table that he prepares in front of your enemies. And, when, and this is what happens. God uses your trial as a, as a school, and then he uses you to have people around you that didn't believe in you, and you start sharing what Jesus did for you. Come on, is there anybody who wants to be a leader? So now, it means to influence and lead themselves, others, teams, and organizations. Starts with self-leadership, then you can lead others. And then you can lead teams. And then you can lead organizations. And this is what you're leading them to do. To take the necessary actions to succeed. To take the necessary actions to succeed. That means everyone wants to succeed, but they're not doing what it takes to succeed. Now, why don't we do what it takes to succeed? Because most people don't want to change. They want success, but they don't want to change their habits, their thinking, and the people they're hanging around with, the meetings they're attending, the books that they're reading, and the idea, they need a leader to help them and motivate them and show them this is the action you're supposed to take. I'm going to lead you to take those actions, help you take those actions so you can succeed. Say, say, succeed. Succeed. Through, how do, how, do we, how do we become leaders? How do we learn the skill? How do we develop others? How do we lead others? Through the method of being mentored and mentoring others. And that means if you're going to be a successful leader, an influential leader that's able to lead people to succeed, this is what happened today. We had a whole bunch of people that just got baptized, and every one of them have a story, but there was, some, there was a leader in their lives that led them out of the crack house. Come on, let them off the streets. Let them out of the depression. Let them out of suicide. There was somebody that influenced their lives, and today they're celebrating a victory. They're celebrating success today. I'm no longer... The person I used to be, thank God for a spiritual leader. Say it with me, I'm a spiritual leader. This, this is what it means. You must be mentored by a successful and influential leader. And then from there, you mentor others. Leadership is taught. Say it with me. Leadership is taught. So we're mentored and then we mentored others. So how do we become a successful leader? We're going to continue review this statement, we imitate the lifestyle and follow the instructions of a successful leader. Success leaves clues. It's very simple. If you do what successful people do and you think the way they think, you will get their results. If you're not thinking what they're thinking and not doing what they're doing, you could wish for success, you'll never have it. So God has chosen to train you to be a leader, 
to lead people to success. But before you can lead people to success, you must first be led to it. Say it with me, I'm leadable. So you find a leader that's succeeding and understand if you do what they do and you think like the way they think, you will get not kind of results like them, you'll get the exact results they're getting. Success is not an accident. Success is a skill and success comes with instructions. So come on, say it with me. Success comes with what? I love this because I can learn this. You are not a victim, and you don't need to stay in the situation you're in. Your defeat can turn into victory if you'll just follow the instructions and follow the leader. I love it. Leaders are made. So I'm going to give you some five truths about leadership development. Number one, truth number one, we can never lead well until we learn how to follow well. We can never lead well until we learn how to what? Follow well. Last week we said this, let's not kind of follow, let's follow to the T. In Joshua 1, 7 it says, be strong and very courageous, and this is how you're strong and courageous. Do you want to learn how to be confident? Someone said, does anybody want to be confident? And, and I'm, I, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. How many want to be confident? What I mean by that is, when I face a trial, I'm not arrogant, I'm confident. I already know we're going to get some victory here. Devil, I always say this, devil, you're messing with the wrong person. Do you think I'm going to be intimidated by this situation? I've gone through battle after battle, and I know how to fight. I've been taught how to fight. I am a warrior. Back up, because this time you picked on the wrong family, the wrong church, the wrong person. You will be defeated when this is all said and done. You guys understand that? Someone say courageous, strong. And you know when you're courageous and strong? When you're looking at a problem and you know the answer. Have you ever, have you ever taken a test in school and aced it? You said, bring me those problems. I know that math problem. This is exactly what I studied. Have you ever been there like you really studied and they're giving you the answers and you're the first one done? Here's my paper, slam dunk. I aced that. And you don't, see, you're not cocky, you're confident. And you're confident because you're prepared. See, if you're going to be a great leader, you're going to have to get confident in your confidence in your preparation. Stop expecting to succeed in the area you're disobedient in. See, you want to get the results of a sexual person, but you still want to do it your way. Well, I don't know if I believe the Bible. There's your first problem. I don't believe. So you don't believe the Bible, so what do you believe? The guy on the internet? Your girlfriend? <laughs> she can't even get out of her own way, and she's giving you counsel. She hasn't succeeded in anything she's ever done. What do you think, baby? Forget about asking her. Let's go to the scripture. Find yourself someone that's mastered the area you want to succeed in and follow the lead. You don't have to be a genius. You just have to be a good follower. Any amens in here? Come on, any leaders in here? Come on. Stop making this so hard. I talked to my leadership team today. I said, this is so easy, a caveman can do it. You're not going to succeed because you're intelligent, you have a high IQ. You're not going to succeed because you're extra talented. You're going to succeed because you follow instructions well. You can learn leadership and you can learn how to be successful. Be careful. Someone say, be careful. To obey, obey all the instructions Moses gave you. I just want to review that because we got to drive that home. You know what's so interesting about the scripture? God does not say, follow the instructions I gave you. He said, follow the instructions your leader gave you. I'm giving you physical examples of people that are led by me. They're succeeded. They Moses led millions of people out of bondage. If you'll follow his instructions, you can start leading these millions of people to victory. 
Come on, give God some praise that you could be, you could learn this stuff. This is what I'm telling you. If you think like me and you do what I do, you can get my same results because there, it's a path. Someone say it's a path. You don't have a marriage problem. You have a thinking problem. Everybody got this, right? Right? You guys get that? So we have, this is what we need to do. We got to stop trying to learn lessons the hard way. Why don't you start learning lessons by being taught and mentored? Well, mom, you messed up your life. Let me mess up my life. Give me some space. Dumb. Why don't you learn from your mama's mistakes and stop using your mama's mistakes as an excuse for you to make mistakes? Just because they thrashed their lives doesn't give you an excuse to thrash your lives. Say, mama, you left me. All you got to say, mama, thank you for showing me what not to do. So you always have a choice in this. Be a victim or learn. I, I, I remember my dad was an alcoholic. My dad was violent. My dad was an abuser. And this is what I said when I was a kid. I don't want to be like that. And I knew what was the cause of his whole mess. It was the alcohol. So I made up my mind as a little boy. This is what I said. I'm not going to be like that. So when they offered me alcohol, I said, no thanks, because it makes you crazy. So you know what happened? I never touched alcohol. I never drank a beer. I have never drank a, a shot. I never did, because I made up my mind, I'm going to learn from his bad behavior, and I'm going to learn a lesson. I'm not going to do it that way. And then I started studying the leader I wanted to be like. It was Jesus. Well, pastor, I want to keep on being drunk. Well, be a drunk. But you're not going to be a leader. You could go ahead and be drunk all you want. And understand, you're just going to raise up drunks. I would say this. They don't even let you drive a car under the influence. What makes you think you can lead a family under the influence? Lead your life under the influence. We're smiling, so anybody still smiling with me? Don't get mad, just get right. Don't get mad, just get right. I love you, I'm trying to, come on, I'm talking to some people that want to be leaders. I know we're getting frank in here because, you're, come on, if you want to be a leader, this, the end of baby in you is over. God has said, I'm training you to be a leader in my army. Let me tell you the truth, we're going to break out of this. Come on, I don't think you want to be in a church that's watering down the instructions to make you feel better. The job of a leader is not to lower the level to the, come on, lower the standards to the level of the people. The purpose of a leader is to raise the people to the standards of God. And that's why you got to get it right so you can help your family get it right. Be careful to obey what? Oh, say it with me. Stop picking which ones you want to obey. But well, that one's hard. <laughs> Moses gave you, do not deviate. Do not what? Deviate. Remember, deviation is demonic. Yeah. Turn it either to right or left. Then you will be successful. Then what? Is this, a, is this an absolute statement? Someone say absolute. If you follow the instructions, you will be successful in everything you do. Any area that you're not succeeding in, you're not following the instructions in. And that's what we're here to learn. Some of us are not following instructions because we're disobedient. And some of us are not following the instructions because we don't know what they are. And this is my job, is to show you the instructions of the Lord so you can get there. God doesn't want you to just die, come on, with no purpose being done. You were created, come on, to be like God. You were created to be like Jesus. You were created to do some great things. But before you could do some great things, you have to follow a great leader. And you're following somebody. 
Okay, so what's the process of leadership development? One, follow well. Someone say follow well. Then lead well. And then the next level is develop leaders who develop leaders well. I know that's deep. But this is what should be happening. You should learn how to be a leader, and then you should be producing after your own kind, developing leaders that produce leaders. Your job is not done with your kids when they get saved. Your job is just beginning when they get saved. Your, your job is to lead them to the Lord and then train them in the Lord. That's why you, as an individual, have to grow to be a leader so you can actually produce a leader, and you'll never produce a leader if you're not a leader. Well, I'm a leader. Who's following you? Nobody. Pues, I know, but I'm a leader. No, you ain't. No one's following you. You're no leader. Before you be a leader, you have to honor a leader. I'm telling you. You get the, you, I'm telling you, you get the anointing of the leader you honor. And that's why there's a spirit of dishonor among, uh, there's a spirit of dishonor in, uh, for leadership. And this is the reason the devil sets that up. He knows you can never get an inheritance of a leader that you don't honor. So truth number two. Truth number one is we can never lead well until we learn how to follow well. Someone say follow well. Truth number two. It's our responsibility to ask our leaders to teach us what they have learned. Understand this. How hungry are you to learn? If you, if, when you're hungry, you ask. Teach me. I don't know how. I want to learn. What he's saying is, don't stay ignorant. There's people that have mastered what you're struggling with. Why not humble yourself and t t say this? Teach me how to do this. I don't want to stay stuck for the rest of my life. Come on. Get in a position to get an impartation. You'll never be mentored if you don't want to be mentored. We should be asking to be mentored. If you're not asking, you don't want it bad enough. I got this. I'll figure it out. No, you won't. Because God set this up that you're going to be taught how to figure it out. Of course, he gives you the Holy Spirit and he'll teach you, of course. But understand this, there's a mentorship that could get, take you to a place of a, a accelerated growth because you're not learning through time and experience. You're, to, through time and experience, you're actually being taught at an accelerated pace. They're going to teach you what would take you 10 years in a, in a meeting. How many want to accelerate your growth? Come on, why do you think God brought you here to hear about leadership? Because he's ready to accelerate your growth. Amen? The disciples asked Jesus to teach them. Look at this in Luke 11, 1. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, How many? How many disciples were there? There's 12. One of them said, like, I know the key to all your power is this prayer stuff. You're raising the dead. You're casting out demons. You're healing the sick. We went through this last time and everybody got healed. And I know the key to walking in that power is the way you pray. Will you teach me how to pray like that? Look what he says. What it sounds, Lord, teach us how to what? Teach us to pray. Just as John taught his disciples, the idea here is, is this is how we learn. This is how we learn. We get mentored just like, he says, teach us how to pray just like John taught his disciples. What he's saying is, this is the method of how you learn. It's mentorship. Say it with me, I'm a, I'm a disciple. Someone say, say it with me, I'm a disciple. I don't know it all. Come on. I got a lot to learn. Come on, does anybody have a lot to learn? How many want to start learning faster, though? I'm, I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be hard. You know why? Because the present you fights the new you. 
The reason most people don't change is they like rather comfort than success. But, 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 you mean I'm going to have to give up the weed? Yeah. But God made the herb. <laughs> Understand, you could keep the weed, but you'll never be a leader like me. You could keep the porn, but you'll never ever clear mine. You could keep your pride, but understand that's all you got. Getting quiet in here again. We need to ask our leaders to teach us. Someone say, teach us. In Deuteronomy 32, 7, look what it says. Remember a long time ago? Think about all the past generations. Ask your fathers to remind you and your leaders to tell and teach you. Ask. What area do you want to succeed in? And maybe you're not succeeding in that area because when was the last time you asked a successful leader, teach me? And then want it bad enough to show up to the class. Many people want to do great things, but they can't even show up to class tonight. You showed up tonight. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Come on, you showed up to class. Come on, do your best and God will do the rest. You showed up to class. Is there anybody learning right now? Come on, I'm going to learn this stuff. It's going to help you in your business. It's going to help you with your marriage. It's going to help you with your family. It's going to help you with your emotions. I remember, I, I told you guys this last week, but I want to just mention it again, I, because I said it at the end. I remember when we started this church. First of all, before we started this church, I was under, I was under a leader, a successful leader for 14 years. Wrote down notes every single Sunday, never missed a Sunday, just learn. And then after that, when we started a church, I visited every successful church in Southern California. Every church that I, that I wanted to be like, I visited them. And you know what I did after that? I set up a meeting with the pastors. I go, I already know you know how to do it. We want to be a church like you that's reaching thousands of people. I'm going to take a pen and paper. Will you meet with me? Now, one of the leaders turned me down. They all met with me because they, they don't get that question asked often. You'll be surprised that successful people are lonely and they're looking for students and they don't get the students because people aren't hungry enough to learn. Any hungry people in here? How many are done with your old life? And you said, like, we gotta, now I gotta, we gotta raise this up, man. We gotta get, come on, we gotta get a heritage of leaders. We're not a heritage of drug addicts, not a heritage of depression, not a heritage of bondage, not a heritage of confusion. Come on, something's gonna shift and it's gonna start with me. I'm deciding right now, I'm gonna be a leader and I'm gonna learn how to overcome what I'm facing. Online, I'm talking to you too. <laughs> right? I met with them, took notes, and then I met with my leaders. And I, and I said, look, this is what I learned. We could do this. It's so easy, a caveman could do it. I just found out that success, the instructions for success aren't difficult. What's difficult is our desire to give up our, our present ways and start doing things differently and repent of our thinking, repent of our habits. Come on, let get rid of the pleasure of the devil and say, I'm done with that pleasure because I understand this. As long as you're being led by the pleasure, you're being led to hell. You're being led to failure. You're being led to defeat. You're being led to bondage. You're being led to prison. You're not being led to the palace. You're not being led to victory. You're not being led to purpose. Is there anybody here that wants purpose over pleasure? Yeah. I'm helping somebody here. Number three, Jesus is truly our leader when we believe and do what he does. Understand this. You, he is not your leader if you just believe in him. I believe in Jesus. 
Not really, because you don't do what he does. Do you actually think that you're a believer? See, when the Bible's talking about a believer, it's not someone that believes he exists because Satan believes that Jesus exists. When you believe that Jesus exists, all, you have the faith of a demon. That's it. You don't become a believer, a real believer, until your, come on, your attitude changes. Come on, your lifestyle changes, and you start living like him. So a real believer does what Jesus does. We want to get the results of Jesus, but we want to live like the devil. And then we want to blame the church. The church is not feeding me. I just feel like I'm so empty. Learn how to feed yourself. Learn how to follow Jesus. Stop blaming everybody and being a victim. Why, why don't you just be honest? I hear the word. I know the word. I can preach the word, but I don't live it. That's why I'm failing. Son, daughter, that's why we're failing. I forgive me for showing you the wrong way to be a Christian. Don't follow the way I've been living. We're going to change this thing. I'm going to start living this life, and I'm going to start showing you what success looks like. I'm going to follow the leader. We're going to become prosperous. We're going to succeed. We're going to overcome. Things are changing because we're changing our leader. I'm going to become a real believer, not a fake believer. Believer by name. You worship him with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. Whew, praise the Lord. People out there don't want to see fake followers. Yeah, I mean, you have the bumper sticker, you have the t-shirt, you, you go to the concerts, but you live like the devil. And all they do is use you as an excuse why Christianity is not real because they already know if it's not real, why don't you live it? If it's, if it's heaven or hell, why don't you live it? If you really think I'm lost for eternity, why don't you live it so I can see an example and I know it's real? Come on, someone's looking for evidence. You're supposed to be it. John 14, 12. Come on, let's, let's go. Look at this. Jesus says this, I can guarantee this truth. Say it with me. I can guarantee this truth. Say it with me. I love the way Jesus speaks. I guarantee you this truth. It's truth, and I understand. Truth works for everybody. Black, white, young, old, Asian. I don't care what you are. You practice truth, it'll work for you. Amen? No one has that kind of power over you. Stop giving... Come, stop giving anybody power over you. Those who believe in me, those who what? Will do the things I'm doing. So the proof that you actually believe in Jesus is you follow him and you do what he's doing. That's, that's the proof. I'm a follower. No, you're not. You, you're a follower by name but not follower by discipline and principle. You're not. Why well, try Jesus? No, you didn't. You tried going to church. And then you were looking for an excuse to go get high. So the first person offended you, you left the church with your excuse so you could go get high. To follow your real leader. Okay, okay. Come back next week. I'm sure, I, I think it'll be a little lighter. Maybe. Come on, does anybody want to hear the truth in here? Come on, is there any truth seekers in this place? Does anybody want some guarantees in life? Aren't you tired of guessing? God is saying, I'm giving you some truth that you can come on, build your life on. And I guarantee you this, if you follow me and you believe in me, you'll do what I've done. But look what he says. You will do the things that I'm doing they will do even greater things. This is leadership. God is not, Jesus is not just training you to do what he does. He's training you to do more than he did. See, I'm a real successful leader when the people underneath me are doing more than even I did. I'm not training you to just do what I've done. I'm training you to do what, you, come on, I've never done what God is saying. I want you to develop people that are even do more than you did because they should be leading off your shoulders. They shouldn't be starting over. 
guys got that? This church ain't going to die when I die. Because we're raising up some leaders to multiply. We don't die, we multiply. Come on, any multipliers in this house? Is there anybody willing to die for this? Come on, is there anyone come on, willing to lay down your life for somebody else? Is there anybody sold out for Jesus? Is there anybody? Are there any real believers in this house? I don't just talk it. I walk it. Pastor, calm down. No. I'm passionate about this. I live this. Come on. I'm not just talking this. I don't have no secret. Come on. Sinful life. I live this life every single day. Jesus says it. I do it. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. I'm not special because I know this. I'm not that smart, but he's smart. And if I do it his way, I look real smart. Are there any men's in this here place? You know, amen, just men. I agree with that. That's all. Don't be, oh, that's crazy. Like, they're real Pentecostal. They're holy rollers. <laughs> all right. Someone say, greater. greater. The true success of a leader is not what he does, but what he does through the leaders and people he's developed. My real success is not what I do. My real success is what I get done through the leaders I've developed. Truth number four, when we imitate the faith and lifestyle of our leaders, we will get their same results. Look at Hebrews 13, 7. Let's, it says, remember the ones leading you. What he said, focus on the ones leading you. Aren't you glad that we got some good leadership in this church? Yeah. That you could actually look at the leadership and, and say, I could live like that. There's an example. Aren't you glad that you have, a, that you have leaders that are examples? I, I, I'll tell you this. I love it. See, when God wants to bless a people, he puts good leadership over them. Understand this. God is putting you under great leadership. We have a great staff here, but he's bringing you under great leadership because he's called, he wants you to do great things. Amen. Me and Lisa have been married for 33 years, and I love her more today than I did yesterday. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Come on. How many would like to have relationships like singles? How many would like to have relationships like that in your future? All I'm saying is learn how to follow Jesus because you're not going to get something you're not. So I'll just follow Jesus and let him lead you to your husband. Let him lead you to your wife. All I'm saying is you follow Jesus. Everything that's coming to you will get to you. Remember the ones leading you who spoke the word of God to you. So what do are, what are, what are spiritual leaders do? They speak what? What do they speak? So this is what they do. They learn the word and, and teach the word. They learn the word and what? If there's one area that you should master is the Bible. If you can master that, if you can master the word, live in it and do it, I guarantee you this, you'll succeed in everything you do. Because you're going to be living out the truth. Look what it says who spoke, to, spoke the word of God to you. Understand, if you're a father, this is what you're supposed to do, is speak the word of God to your children. If you're a husband, you're supposed to speak the word of God to your wife. And what you put in is what you're going to get out. Look what it says. Whose faith be imitated. Whose faith what? He said, look at the leaders and imitate their thinking and imitate, imitate their beliefs and imitate their faith in God. Imitate that. You know, this is like really hard to teach nowadays because there's so many bad leaders. And I'm going to say this. I apologize. I apologize for the bad leaders that you've been under. And I know they weren't an example. And they'll tell you, don't look at me. Look at, you know, look at Jesus. And I'm telling you, that's a cop out for leadership. They're, not, they're supposed to see Jesus in you. You should be able to say, hey, follow me as I follow Christ. I'm not perfect. I'm growing, but I am following. 
Come on, any, any amens in this house? Come on, is, this is true. This is true. Well, I'm a, you know, I'm a sinner. No, you ain't. If you're a Christian, you're not a sinner. You have an identity crisis. You're a child of God. The Spirit of God lives in you. You used to be a practicing sinner. Now you're a believer. And believers do what Jesus does. And as long as you keep calling yourself a sinner, this is what you're going to do. You're going to keep acting like one. What's a sinner? One who practices sin? I don't practice sin. I practice righteousness. And if I fall, I just get back up and start practicing again. But there's one thing. I don't stay down in a sin. Come on, I get right back up. And I say, nah, that's not my lifestyle. I made up my mind. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus is my leader. All right, let's end it with this. Imitating while looking carefully at the result of their way of life. He's saying, look at the results of their lives. Look at it. Because if you imitate their faith and you imitate their lifestyle, look carefully, you could get the same results. I love that. I got so much to learn. And I'm reading books. And if I find someone to succeed in the area, I'm asking. I'm not trying to know, be a know-it-all because I'm responsible to lead my family, lead a church to a higher place. And I just can't remain ignorant in areas because if I remain ignorant, I can't lead the church to a higher level. So every day I got to be learning. Every day I got to be mentored. Every day I'm asking the Holy Spirit to give me revelation. Every day I'm studying the word because I want to become more like Jesus every day. I want to learn how to be a greater leader. I am, this is, it's, a, it's an everyday lifestyle. Come on, I'm self-educated every single day. I'm reading books. I'm doing whatever it takes to train myself to be more like Christ. Any leaders like that in this house? Come on. Come on, read the Bible. Show up to church. Show up this Sunday. Come on, it's time to show up to school. Come on, this is turning into a leadership spiritual university because we're going to reach the world. How many believe that there's a revival beginning here at the Way World Outreach? And God is saying, come on, we're raising the teaching. I'm developing leaders. No longer are we just focusing on baby messages. Well, you know what baby messages are? It's okay, you, come on, you could do it. You know what baby messages, you're falling, you're falling. Get back up. Get back up. Let me hold your hand. I'm not saying that you don't start off there, but it's 10 years already. You should have learned how to walk by now. And we can't baby you no more. We got to tell you, you should learn how to walk by now. You, come on, you should overcome that addiction by now. You should be a teacher of the word by now. And you're still stuck in the same place. I'm taking you out of this. I'm giving you some teaching. I'm raising you to be a leader. Come on, anybody accepting this call on their lives? All right. I'm going to piss the pastor Christian close out because right now I'm on fire. If I stay up here with part two. But I'm proud of every one of you. I'm telling you this, I love you. I love you. I'm not teaching to teach. Come on. I'm not standing up here in a soapbox. I'm just letting you know I am passionate about you becoming everything that God has called you to be. I want you to succeed. I want to break. Come on. I want you to break the generational curses in your family. I know they've always done it that way, but it doesn't mean you need to do it that way. Is there anybody that wants some change in their lives? You're going to have to make up your mind to choose the right leader, which is Jesus. Pastor Christian, please close this out. Yes. Come on. Come on. How many receive that word tonight? You may be seated. Someone say, I am a leader. The best way we can be the leaders that God has called us to be is to follow the greatest leadership of all time. When we get, we want, when we get the results of Jesus, it's only when we follow his instruction. And tonight, he's given us instruction. And he has a door wide open to you. He's saying, follow me. I will lead you. I have instructions for you. I have a way. But God, I'm addicted. I have a way out of that. God, I'm depressed. 
I have a way out of that. I can lead you out of that. God, my family is broken. I have a way for you. Let me lead you. The Bible says that the wages or the prices of our sin is death. What does that mean? We've been leading our own lives. Our own desires have been leading us. And the results of that is death. We pay a high price for the pleasures of this world. Not only do we pay a price here, but death even, even means separation, eternal separation from God forever. Because God loves you so much, because Jesus is a leader, Jesus came down to this earth and lived a perfect life, died on the cross and resurrected from the dead to give you eternal life. Je Jesus loves you so much that he died for you while you were still a sinner. And there's nothing you can do to earn salvation or to earn right reputation with God. All we can do is trade in our old life and, and welcome Jesus and confess Jesus as the leader of our lives, as our Lord and as our Savior. So tonight, if you're ready to churn in your old life and to make God the leader, to make Jesus the leader of your life, if you're saying you've sinned, you've fallen short, and you're ready to give God everything, to be forgiven of your sins, if you're saying tonight I wanna give God my everything because the reality is because we've sinned, because we've fallen short, we owe a high price, but Jesus paid for that price already. All we need to do is receive it. You don't have to try and go out here and be a perfect person and come back and present yourself to God. Even our good works are like filthy rags before the Lord. What does that mean? God is so holy and perfect. The standard's too high. We can't go out and try to fix our life. We need a savior. His name is Jesus. Jesus is opening the door right now for you to come in and to give, to give your life the imperfections, the sin, the bondage, the addiction, the old way of living. Give it all to him and he'll give you a brand new start tonight. He'll give you forgiveness of your sins. He'll give you eternal life. He's just saying, come to me. If you're ready to give him everything tonight, if you're ready to put your faith in Jesus, and when I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. Every, from the front row to the back, everyone who's ready to give their life to Jesus tonight, I want you to raise your hand when I count to three. One, two, three. All over this building, raise your hands, raise your hands. I see those two hands right here. I see the third hand at four, five, six. Keep your hand up, seven, eight. Anybody else in the back? I see you, nine. I see you, 10. I see you. I see you guys at 11, I see you. Anybody else, you're saying that's me, 12, 13, 14. Anybody else, 15, 16, 17. Come on, for all those that raise your hand, 18, I want you to stand up on your feet right now. If you just raise your hand. And church, I want us to clap for everyone that raised their hand tonight. They made a decision to follow Jesus. Can you do me one more favor? If you raise your hand tonight, I want you to do one more bold step. Will you join us up here in the front? Because we're going to pray for you. We want to congratulate you. We want to walk you in this step. If you raise your hand, come up to the front. Church, let's stand to our feet. Let's clap. Let's applaud. Let's all stand and give them a standing ovation tonight. If you raise your hand, come on up. Come on up. We're going to pray for you. Here's another call. Pastor Margo, God just put this on his heart. He's saying there's those tonight that need to recommit their life to the Lord. You're ready, and you may be up here right now. You're up here right now. But anybody else right now who's saying, you know what, I, I, I've been, I haven't been following well, and I need to follow Jesus well. I have, I have maybe confessed with my mouth that I love him, but my heart has been far from him. And I'm ready to follow Jesus well tonight and recommit my life. If that's you, I want you to make your way out of your seat. I want you to come up here as a bold statement in front of everyone in this room and say, I'm gonna follow Jesus well. And your first instruction is to come up to the front tonight, to give Jesus your whole life and to confess him as your Lord and to leave your life right here, your old life, right here at the altar. Is there anybody else tonight you're saying, that's me? Um, oh, okay, awesome. That's great. Pastor Marco is actually gonna be preaching in Carson at our Carson campus tomorrow night at 7 p.m. 
Thursday night in Carson. If you need the information, we'll put that on our social media. If you want to go support Carson Campus, go, go on out there. It's going to be powerful. Man, this is good. <laughs> Don't forget, church, there's so much. There's all, all this word we're getting right now. How awesome would it be for someone else to, to receive this, our family and our friends, to receive everything that God is doing here? Don't forget, Easter's coming up. God has given us a window to invite, to love people, to spread the gospel, to bring them in. Let's do that together, okay? Everyone who's up here, we're gonna pray with you. We're gonna walk you through the process. We're gonna help you get discipled. There's a class called Holy Warriors, and this class is, is designed to teach you and to train you how to follow Jesus Christ. And that's what we're gonna do. The person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and they're gonna help you get signed up. We need a few more altar workers, please. We have some women up here. We can get some ladies up here. We, uh, there's a gentleman over here as well. We just wanna make sure we got everyone covered. Thank you so much, leaders. Bow your heads, let's pray together. Repeat this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross and to raise from the dead to save me forgive me lord for the sins that i've committed i repent right now i turn away from my old life and i turn to you i give you everything i surrender it all fill me now with your holy spirit make me a new creation from this moment forward you are my leader and I am following you. Thank you, Jesus, for leading me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, and amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Perfect. Don't forget, church, we got our yard signs. These yard signs, we only have 200 left. These things are going fast. These things are good all year long. So we have an Easter sign that you can put up for these next few weeks before Easter. I have one in my lawn right now. If you pass by my house, you'll see my yard sign. They do survive the rain, okay? It survived all the rain <laughs> this past week. They're good all year long. We have them right over here in our merchandise booth. You can buy yours now. They will go fast. Um, and we, ha we have a limited supply. These are limited edition. So get your yard sign. Don't forget, use the wayinvite.com to invite friends and family. You can use it, type it in, invite everyone that you would invite to your wedding. If you need any prayer, come forward. We love to pray with you. God bless you. Remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. Have a wonderful night.